Our goal as believers should be to bear good fruit, fruit that will inspire all of those that are around us that they should have faith and that they should move by faith. Our faith, it can inspire all of those that are around us to stand up for what is right, to stand up for what is just, to stand up for what is good. It can inspire them to when their faith is put to the test, it can inspire them to stand up in their faith. We saw it in our Sunday school lesson last week where Daniel's faith, it was being challenged. And Daniel, he chose obedience. Daniel, he chose to honor God's law. And so here in our Sunday school lesson this week, there in the third chapter of Daniel, we'll see where Daniel's faith, where it inspired his friends because his friends, their faith, it was going to be put to the test. Our lesson today, it opens up there in the third chapter of Daniel, there in the first, the first verse there, with Nebuchadnezzar had made an image of gold that he set up in Dura, that is a province in Babylon. We're told there in that verse that this image, it stood at a height that equates to 90 feet tall. It was, its width, it was about nine feet wide as well. This image, and I preached this in a recent sermon. If you want to go and check out this recent sermon, certainly do so. But this, this image, it was built in a manner of defiance from Nebuchadnezzar because he had a vision, he had a dream of an image with the head of that image being representative of him. But that image, it was destroyed in his dream. And so he builds this image, an image that's covered in gold as an act of defiance saying to the world, saying to God himself, I cannot be destroyed. And so when we take a look at scripture that runs from the fourth through the sixth verse there, we'll see that Nebuchadnezzar, he had it announced in this province here that all the people in the province, they were to bow down, they were to worship this image of gold. Again, I, I want to be very clear here about this. Nebuchadnezzar, as we saw in our Sunday school lesson last week, he had no problem with forcing others to sin. He had no problem with forcing sin on to others. And that is what we see here in our Sunday school lesson again this week. As I said in last week's lesson, and as I said in recent sermons as well, the Babylonian people, they were sinful people. We see here that they were idolatrous people. They had their gods that they worshiped. And here Nebuchadnezzar is with this image of gold saying, hey, worship this. It was not a big deal for the Babylonians. It was not a big deal for, for Nebuchadnezzar. So here we are with Daniel's friends living in this province with Nebuchadnezzar saying, you better worship this image of gold. Their faith again was being put to the test because their faith was being put to the test. This was a big deal for Daniel and his friends. The reason why is because we know, as the Lord said in the book of Exodus, I am a jealous God. And again, we know that they were supposed to have no other gods before them. That was part of the Mosaic law, part of the 10 commandments. They were not supposed to worship any images. Would they do that? What would they do in their faith? Now we're told there in the eighth verse, looking at the eighth through the 12th verse here, we're told there that certain Chaldeans, that's Babylonians, we're told that they took word of what Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, what they had chosen to do there. And as I said, again, in my sermon last week, something that all of us as believers, children of the Lord, something that we must come to know and understand is that, that we are being watched. We are being watched. We are also being judged as well. The adversary, like a roaring lion, is what Peter describes Satan as. He's always watching us, stalking us, waiting for the moment to, to where we make a mistake, waiting for a moment to where we slip up, waiting for a moment that can be used against us. And, and here in this moment, Daniel's friends, they chose not to bow down and worship the image of gold. They made a choice. And again, something that I said in my sermon last week as well is that every day that we live, we have an important choice to make. What is that important choice that we have to make? Whether or not we are going to live in obedience to the word of God. Every single day that you live, you choose, will you live in obedience or will you not live in obedience? For us as believers, guess what that choice should be? 
should be to live in obedience, right? And so we see Daniel's friends here, they refuse to bow to the image of gold and certain Babylonians, they saw it and they take word to Nebuchadnezzar. How do you think that Nebuchadnezzar, how do you think that he is going to respond now that these Jews, as he's told there, certain Jews, how do you think he responds in the fact that they are defying his command? How do you think that he will respond? We're told there in the 13th verse that Nebuchadnezzar, he raged. He raged because these three young men, they didn't obey his command. It's, it's very interesting. And, and I mentioned this in, in the sermon as well. It's very interesting that Nebuchadnezzar, he had no problem with, with, with defying the Lord defying a warning in the dream that came from God. He had no problem doing it, but these young men defying his command. Oh, no, 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 no. He rages, we are told there. He, he is upset, he is mad. And we're told there that he was furious as well, full of fury. We're told there that he commanded that the young men be brought before him. Why? Because again, surely they would not defy him to his face. That's the thought there, right? And so we'll see that he first asked them there in the 14th verse when they are brought to him, he asked them whether or not it was true that they were defying his command. Because again, surely not to his face, they would not defy him, right? Without waiting for an answer. We'll see there in the 15th verse that Nebuchadnezzar, he again gave them a reminder of his command, essentially saying, look, I'm giving you this order. I am giving you this command. You better, you better listen to me. You better obey my command, dictating, trying to again, force sin onto them. Would they, would they conform? Would they cower now that they are standing before Nebuchadnezzar? looking evil in the eyes, what would they do here? Even more, we'll see there in the 15th verse that Nebuchadnezzar, he reiterated the fact that if they did not do as commanded, there was a fiery furnace that was awaiting them. And if they didn't do what was commanded, they would be thrown into the midst of a fiery furnace. So again, let's be very clear about this. Nebuchadnezzar is trying to show his power and his authority. Once again, we see this man who I imagine it was very rare that we, he was defied ever. He saw himself as a God and, and he was used to, to his subjects. He was used to them obeying his command. We saw it with the eunuch and the steward of the eunuch in, in our Sunday school lesson last week to where they live by Nebuchadnezzar's way and they thought that his way was the only way to live. They lived in obedience to it. They feared for their lives because Daniel was saying, nope, I'm not going to live by his way. I'm going to live by the way of God. And so Nebuchadnezzar, he was used to people fearing him. And so when someone would disobey him, you could imagine that every single time it was death for those who defied him because this was a, a, a manner of power and authority and control for, for him, the king. This was him saying, I have power over your life. And, and if you don't do as I command, I am going to throw your life away. And so again, let us understand here what it is that Daniel's friends, what they are facing here, because their life is on the line, right? So again, the question is here, would they cave in because their life is on the line or would they choose to again, be obedient? Would they stand by their faith now that their life is on the line? So we'll see there in the 15th verse. I want you to notice that again, he asked there, Nebuchadnezzar, again, trying to show his power and his authority here. He asks, who is the God who would deliver you from my hands? So again, just reiterating the fact here that he thinks himself to be a God, thinking in himself that he is almighty, that he is powerful, that nobody could save them. Again, trying to drive fear into the friends of Daniel's heart. That's what he's trying to do here. And that's what the wicked and that's what the evil do. They love to fear monger. They love to drive fear 
and to the hearts of, of those that are around them, to those who, who should cower down, to those who should, should respect and fear their, their authority. Powerful men love saying things like this to, to display their power and, and many folks will cave in. Many folks will give in. Many folks will surrender their power to the power of those who think that they are powerful. And I'm using air quotes there because again, they don't have any power. Again, the one who is all powerful, last time I checked, is the Lord my God. And so we'll see there in the 16th verse, these young men said to Nebuchadnezzar, oh Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. They said, if that is the case, our God whom we serve, he is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And look at this, they said to Nebuchadnezzar's face, he would deliver us from your hand. Let's remember their life, their life was on the line here. Let's keep that in mind. So I want you, I want you to understand that just like Daniel, they were choosing God over everything, right? They were choosing God even over their own lives. And, and I said this when I taught the Sunday school lesson in church last week, I, don't, I can't remember if I said this uh, in the recording that I did last week for last week's lesson, but this is what it looks like to put God first, putting God over everything in your life, including yourself, putting God first. I want you to understand that's not simply waking up in the morning and the first thing that you say is the Lord God or, or say hallelujah or even or even saying a prayer. And don't get me wrong about this. There is absolutely nothing wrong with waking up in the morning and the first thing you do is give thanks to God. There is absolutely nothing wrong with the first thing that you do in the morning is, is pray to the Lord. That's, that's actually a wonderful thing. If that is what your mind is set to do and you're not doing it out of religion, because again, that is the key. What is your mindset? What is your mind set to do? Putting God first means that your mind, your heart, it is guided by living in obedience to the Lord by honoring his word. That is what it means to put God first in your life. Many of us, we don't consider God's way first in our life. We consider our way first. We consider our way over everything. As the saying goes, it's our way or the highway. We are going to set out to do what we desire to do rather than put our faith in the Lord and, and trust in, in the Lord directing and, and ordering our steps. And again, like I said in my sermon last week, and, I, and I, highly, I would highly advise you to go and listen to the sermon and watch the sermon as well, is that again, faith, it must become like breathing for us to where any challenges that, that come along the way, we don't stress, we don't worry, we don't panic, we, we simply move by faith, trusting the Lord with every step that we take in good or in bad, we again, we must learn how to surrender ourselves to the will of God. And that's something that we'll see Daniel's friends do there as we take a look at the 18th verse there. We'll see there in the 18th verse that they said to Nebuchadnezzar in their stance of faith, they said, if God doesn't deliver us, right, we will not serve your gods nor your image of gold. No matter what the outcome was, they were saying, we are not going to do as you command. Some of us, we may think that this sounds like, it sounds like they were doubting, but this was not doubt. They were saying, they said, hey, if, if you throw us in that fiery furnace, we believe that our God, that he is able to, to deliver us from the fiery furnace. We believe that he's able to deliver us from your hands. But then they looked at the out, the other outcome of, of this matter to where maybe they will be consumed by the fiery furnace. And, and in that case, maybe they wouldn't have been delivered from the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. 
would they fault that to the Lord? No, they would just look at that as, again, being part of God's will. And, and they were accepting of the will of the Lord. Again, something that we as believers must come to understand Again, all things work together for good to those that love the Lord. That is what Paul said. We look at outcomes as being good or bad. But I would tell you today, even in your bad, just know that your bad is working for, for good, that you can prosper from the bad. Again, I, I often reference what I went through in, in losing my kidney and then having to go through through five years of dialysis, someone would have looked at my condition as a bad thing. I even did that at the beginning. But look at where I am today. I have grown in my faith. I have a transplant, yes, but again, I feel that because of what I went through in that trial and, and in that tribulation, I feel that I am a better person today because today in comparison to where I was uh, in 2016, I am even more resolute in my faith. And again, I, I, and I often say this, I am not perfect, but I, I truly do believe that I am better today than I was yesterday because I am more quicker to, to, to fall to my faith, to fall onto my faith than to go out and try to do my own thing, leaving God behind. And, and that, again, I believe that that is something that we all learn in our trials and in our tribulations. That's why somebody like James, he could say that in our trials and our tribulations, we should count it all joy because our patience that it is going to grow. In other words, our faith is going to grow. So again, we must learn how to move by faith. We must learn how to trust in the will of God so that our faith, that it can bear good fruit. And again, so that it can inspire those that are around us so that it can inspire them to have faith, so that it can inspire them to move by faith as well. That is something that I certainly hope that you will take away from our Sunday School lesson this week. No matter what it is that you are going through, no matter the challenges that you face, put God over everything. Choose to, to be obedient to the way of God. And as we'll see in our Sunday School lesson next week, God, he will deliver you. Hey there, thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. And if you have any questions, if you have any comments, don't be afraid to leave a question. Don't be afraid to leave a comment as well. And again, if you aren't doing so already, make sure that you're following the New Found Faith channel. Make sure you hit the alert bell so that you don't miss any of our wonderful videos that we have here on our YouTube page.